Hello everyone, and it is my pleasure to be speaking to you today about the comparative outcomes between prostate brachytherapy versus external beam radiation versus SBRT. And my comments will pertain mostly to patients with low and intermediate risk disease. Here are my disclosures. I'm a consultant for Boston Scientific and editor-in-chief of the Brachytherapy Journal. So when we are dealing with comparative outcomes, we're gonna be focusing on toxicity after therapy and the efficacy of therapy. Toxicity would include urinary symptoms such as bother symptoms or urethral strictures or urinary incontinence or could include rectal symptoms such as bleeding or leakage or sexual dysfunction. The efficacy of therapy, mostly as in the published literature focusing on PSA relapse-free survival differences, but we'll also touch on post-treatment biopsy outcome differences and progression-free survival outcomes as well. Now, I think it's very important, even though our task today is to try to discuss the comparisons between the various radiotherapeutic modalities, there are a great deal of challenges and limitations when trying to accomplish this, especially as we try to cull information from non-randomized studies. Because from these studies, it's difficult to make broad conclusions about toxicity outcome differences in a non-randomized setting. Toxicities are not always assessed with patient reported outcomes, but rather with less accurate physician reported outcomes. And then of course there are clear baseline differences in comorbidities and the urinary and sexual baseline functions between the different cohorts that you want to compare. And these differences could make often a real change and explain the differences in outcomes as well. And associated with these non randomized or retrospective cohorts. There's a great deal of variability in follow-up between the cohorts. There's a very great deal of variability in the quality of the follow-up of these studies and these confound comparisons. And then, of course, there's a great challenge in looking at radiotherapy in the modern era because radiotherapy, prostate radiotherapy in particular, is the classic moving target. And why is that the case? Because there have been dramatic improvements in technology over the last 10 years which have truly revolutionized radiotherapy delivery. Treatments are being delivered now with such exquisite precision, and this precision is associated with less normal tissue exposure, which in turn leads to less dose to the normal tissue, less side effects, improved symptom tolerance profile. And in more recent years, higher radiation dose levels and the selective use of short course androgen deprivation therapy, usually six months, which is now days more routinely employed with radiation, especially for intermediate risk disease in conjunction with external beam radiation, often has and has been shown in two randomized trials with external beam radiotherapy, led to improved tumor control rates, and an even improved survival compared to outcomes with lower dose levels or without androgen deprivation combined with the external radiation. So indeed, it is a moving target as we would want to compare studies from years ago where it was not associated with this enhanced precision and the higher dose levels that are being delivered compared to what we are doing nowadays. And I share with you two more recent studies, but again, these are non-randomized, yet patient-reported quality of life studies, which compared SBRT, LDR, and high-dose rate brachytherapy. Numbers are relatively small here, but this is a cohort that comprised of 342 low-dose rate permanent seed implants, 159 high-dose rate brachytherapy, 112 SBRT patients treated during this time period. And what were the take-home messages here? Number one, the IPS score worsened at all time points compared with the baseline in among patients who had brachytherapy. In other words, brachytherapy was associated with more acute urinary 
symptoms, symptoms of bother, frequency, urgency. And at early and late time points, the rates of IPSS of the urinary score after LDR in particular were higher uh, compared to other forms, even a brachytherapy, HDR, and the SBRT. All modalities showed some changes in sexual function, worsening. And finally, bowel symptoms worsened early after SBRT, where, which was not really the case with brachytherapy, and that's because of the broader exposure and higher doses that were used, whereas urinary irritative or obstructive symptoms worsened more often after high dose rate brachytherapy. Again, a retrospective study, but its advantage, patient reported quality of life outcomes. Here's another similar kind of study published in European Urology in 2019, which compared EBRT and SBRT to active surveillance. Take home messages here, EBRT patients had worse urinary obstructive and irritative symptoms and even sexual dysfunction at three months and worse bowel symptoms at three and 24 months compared to active surveillance. And SBRT patients had similar scores as active surveillance, which indicates when you put these two bullets together that SBRT was a little better tolerated from the patient reported quality of life perspective compared to external beam radiation. Again, small sample sizes and making broad conclusions from here quite difficult. Here is a summary of the trials uh, that are that have ongoing or have been completed, um, which have compared ultra hypofractionated, which we call SBRT or SABR, compared to either conventionally fractionated external beam radiation or moderate hypofractionation completed in five weeks. And I bring to your attention and focus on for today's presentation what is highlighted here in green. Two studies which have now sh uh, reported their early results. The HypoRTPC, which compared an SBRT regimen of seven fractions compared to an eight-week, um, um, nine-week uh, regimen. And the this was for intermediate risk disease with the endpoints of PSA relapse free survival. And then the PACE-B study, which was a randomized trial as well for low and intermediate risk disease comparing a classic five fraction SBRT regimen to conventionally fractionated EBRT. Not including here any comparison to brachytherapy, but it gives us some important information. Published in Lancet 2019, no androgen deprivation was allowed in this study. Randomized trial, as we talked about, and here's the take-home message. The PSA relapse-free survival at five years was 84% for both treatment groups, as shown here. The curves are superimposable here. Between conventional fractionation and ultra-hypofractionation. Note, this study included intermediate and selected high-risk patients. Overall survival, cause specific mortality, similar between the two groups as well. But what's very important here to note, and an important contribution in the paper, in this randomized trial, was that the GU toxicity and the GI toxicities were similar between the groups, indicating that a short course, lower burden kind of treatment was just as good as the protracted treatments. And I think this is emerging now and changing standards of care. Similarly, the PACE-B trial for low and intermediate risk patients where no ADT was allowed, primary endpoint, once again, PSA relapse, free survival. Let's concentrate here on grade two toxicities for GU, and grade two toxicities for GI, superimposable once again between the conventional fractionation and the SBRT. And so here are my perspectives as far as urinary symptoms are concerned when we try to make these comparisons between the various modalities. And this is based on my perspectives from the published literature. Again, in the absence of 
very reliable randomized trials comparing all of these together. But when it comes to LDR, I think the general perception is, and from our, our own experience, that there are more acute grade 2 urinary symptoms with LDR compared to EBRT or SBRT. And in general, when it comes to late toxicity, we're talking about 15 to 20 percent, which could patients who would, would require medications for these bother symptoms. Grade 3 toxicities, however, across the board are low. Strictures in general with in institutions with good experience is in the 2% ranges. And the same thing with late urinary incontinence across the board. I think the real differences lie in the acute symptoms, LDR, more noticeable, and that's what we've seen in the patient reported quality of life at studies as well. Rectal bleeding, I think overall in the single digits. EBRT, especially without IMRT, is a higher rate of rectal bleeding. And I think what we've learned in the literature, and in particular from the randomized trial reported by Hamstra et al. a couple of years ago, uh, is that the utilization of a rectal spacer uh, would appear to lower further the risk of rectal bleeding, and we have utilized that in the brachytherapy setting and in the SBRC, SBRT setting as well, reducing the rectal bleeding rates to even lower rates from generally 5 or 6% to about 1%. Prostate brachytherapy, however, is a very attractive modality for the patient with favorable and intermediate risk disease. Because of all radiotherapeutic modalities, it does have indeed the most ablative potential. That as a result of that ablative potential, PSA nadir is generally significantly lower than EBRT, and the post-treatment biopsy outcomes has been reported by a number of reports. This one here is from Stock et al. a number of years ago, 7% positive biopsies. It's interesting to note that when we looked at our post-treatment biopsy outcome in an IMRT external beam radiotherapy cohort, for low and intermediate risk disease, the positive biopsy rates at two years post-treatment hovered around 25%. And interestingly, when we've utilized SBRT, we've seen lower biopsy rates of 11% compared to 25% when using the 40 gray SBRT dose level. And so SBRT seems to have some greater ablative potential maybe than external beam radiation. Maybe prostate brachytherapy has even more ablative potential as well. So here are my conclusions how we utilize this information to make and help patient make decisions regarding treatment selection of the proper radiotherapeutic modality. Prostate brachytherapy, we prefer for the younger patient with low urinary symptom burden. Why? Long-term track record, greater than 15 years. It's also the least time burden commitment for the patient it's a one-shot treatment given as an outpatient. Yes, done under general anesthesia. Highly ablative form of therapy, as we've talked about, which produces lower PSA nadir levels post-treatment. And as has been reported in this study by Wallace et al., published a number of years ago in a meta-analysis, a lower second malignancy potential compared to external beam radiation, lower with brachytherapy. Yet patients with significant urinary symptoms, we prefer SBRT over LDR brachytherapy to have less urinary bother chronic symptoms in the long run. And for patients with large prostates who would otherwise require downsizing with ADT, and that would impair, especially for the sexually active patient and his quality of life, we would seriously consider SBRT over brachytherapy and of course consider surgery as well. Thank you very much for your attention today.